With the rise of food prices and global production, we are seeing it more and more how essential it is to grow your own food, to have a garden. Today, we're going to show you how easy it is to take the back-breaking work on having a vegetable garden. If you have a vegetable garden, you know exactly what is going into your food. So no tractor, no problem. Here is a plot of land that's never been plowed or tilled before, except for about 85 plus years ago. And my grandfather did it with a mule. So we can consider that this land has never been plowed or tilled before. Here onto the East Coast, we have not had any cold weather. This has been about one of the coldest days we have, and you see I have a flannel shirt on. But saying that, the grass has not died. It's got a lot of greenery. This is a lot of thick grass, so it's definitely going to have to be plowed up. Now, you should, this is January, you should have it plowed up at least, you know, maybe two months prior to January. It would be a new ground. But nevertheless, it's not about the time frame. It's about going ahead and getting it done. So today, that's what we're going to do. So a gentleman's going to come in and help me get this plowed up. It was supposed to have been plowed up two months ago, but, uh, you know, I just had to pull him in. And so he's going to take care of that. After we get it plowed up, after you get your ground plowed up and tilled up, then what you want to do is do a pH test. You want to put lime in there. You want to put fertilizer in there. And of course, you're going to have to get some rocks, maybe, and some sticks and some roots out, you know, get it out. But the next year, it'll be a, so much easier. I have a garden I've had for four years, and last year it was so productive. I had hardly any grass into it because the soil is so good, so rich. But I don't have to deal with the rocks and the sticks, and it's, it's just really easy. Once you get your garden going, it's not as hard as you think. But you do have to put time in it. What you put into it, into it is what you get out of it. How much time you put into it is how much you're going to get out of it. You put some time into it, you're going to get a great harvest. If you're not able to have a garden plot, maybe it depends on where you live, or maybe a smaller one, you wouldn't believe how much food a smaller little raised bed would put out. But maybe you're considering a greenhouse. So let me show you my greenhouse that's under construction. Only thing it's lacking is the wiggle wire and the plastic. So here's the greenhouse. And this is good for like, you know, winter time growing when you can't really get outside, you're unable to really get outside, this will, this will be a really good bit benefit. So check out my video, how to build a low side wall greenhouse. Now, some people may say this is overkill, but I live in a hurricane zone. So within that, we gotta make sure that the uh, greenhouse doesn't go rolling. So with this being such a thick grass here, and never been plowed, tilled, anything done for it for years and years. So it is pretty much new ground. Um, many people take Roundup and they kill the grass before they go in and plow. Now I would not advise that because you are what you eat. That Roundup goes into soil. Yes, it'll kill the grass, but it goes into the soil and your plants get all its nutrients from that soil and it goes into your plants. So the easiest route is really to take a tractor. If you don't own a tractor, then you hire someone like I did to make it so easy and so practical that you can just move forward with it. Then after you do your pH, put your lime in, your fertilizer in, you can cover it up and finish smothering out this grass. The reason of enlarging my garden plot is because last year I ran into the problem because we're running into different seasons now. We don't really know how the season's going to do. But here onto the east coast of North Carolina, we got an enormous amount of rain. And it rotted the garden peas and the potatoes. And it took three times for the garden peas for me to get them to even come up. Now garden peas, they do not like the heat. So when the heat starts rolling in, they quit. At the same time, the potatoes, you know, they was two months late. And so by the time they were supposed to be out of the ground, it was time to plant something else also. So I run into a little problem there. So I feel like I need to expand my garden out so the possibility I won't have that little problem there if there is a problem. What I did with the garden peas, it was time to plant rattlesnake beans. And like I said, check out that video on uh, how to plant rattlesnake beans, the most productive 
bean I have ever grown and definitely will grow them again. Got some dry beans, got some seeds for this year, and they were just awesome. But when the garden peas were coming up, of course, garden peas, you have them on a trellis somehow, a trellis, because they're going to run. And so is the rattlesnake beans. With the rattlesnake beans, it was time to plant them. They was two weeks late getting into the ground. So what I did, I just went on the other side of the, the garden peas and I planted some seeds. And by the time the garden peas couldn't take the heat anymore, it was time to get them out. The rattlesnake beans was about four to five inches tall and then suddenly they took off. But if you have a bigger space, then you don't have to run into problems like that. Another good idea I did was also is that I made my garden like a raised bed. I planted my rows closely together no more than about two feet. Now within that, you have to go in there constantly and trim out the leaves, which I did, and you throw them to the soil, which it goes back into the soil, which goes back into your plants. It's just a matter, you just gotta keep up trimming the leaves. But also with that benefit, what created was that the grass, uh, there was no grass. It just pretty much smothered out any grass, smothered out any grass that was trying to come up with the soil being really healthy and nourishment it was just, it didn't really take on the grass. But once you get your garden going, once you get your plot going, and you get the grass out, many people don't understand, you have to keep the grass out. How much time you put into it is how much time you're gonna get out. Once you really get all those grass roots out, then you're not gonna have a, a big, big problem. Or if you don't have the time, you can put row cover down, and that will help smother out the grass. Now the gentleman's on his way and he's rolling in soon to bring in the bring in to help me to get this situated so I can show you how easy it is to get your garden started. No tractor, no problem. Hey guys, I got somebody I want you to meet. Bryce Rogers. So I've been called out to Cammy's farm, her homestead to help her prepare a garden on ground that has not yet been tilled. At least, uh, there's no record of it ever having been tilled. So oh, this is wait a minute. 75 plus years ago, my Se grandfather did it. But actually, it's ah. 85 plus years ago, guys. Well, that and that's... Predates the, me. Yeah. I wasn't you, around. Yeah, me either. But you know what, guys? It's still new ground. It's, it's, it's for all practical purposes. This is new ground. Yeah, he actually plowed it up with a mule. So back in the day, they had to grow their own food. If they didn't grow, up, grow it, they didn't get it. We're so. going to be plowing with approximately 23 mules today. Oh, wow. Which is a little more than your, your grandpa. Probably. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. He would be amazed to see this. <laughs> so uh, we have new grass. We've got uh, a soil that hadn't been turned for many, many years. And we're going to do it with a... Uh, a machine, a John Deere tractor, 23 horse John Deere 1023E, and an economic piece of tillage, a disc, uh, a four foot wide disc. It cost about a third the price of a, of a good tiller. And a, obviously a, a PTO driven tiller is preferred. It's the, the right tool for the job, but it's not economical. So we'll do it today. In uh, a few more passes, a little bit more time, but just as well in the end result. So actually this ground was supposed to, should have been plowed about two months ago. And um, so we're in January right now, but thank God that he's coming in to get this straightened out. But one of the things that amazed me when you we was talking about Roundup, because I don't put, like to put Roundup, Roundup into my soil because you are what you eat. But you told me something about the Roundup and the seeds, what the farmers do. Can you talk about that? Sure, sure, to some degree. Uh, farmers will frequently use a Roundup ready uh, plant, uh, a seed that allows for the use of Roundup to kill off the weeds, the undesirable plants, while the, the desired crop grows through the Roundup. Wow, wow. So I'm, I'm very uh, much into, I, I want to say organic, but sometimes what you think is organic is not organic. That's why it's so essential for us to start growing our own food. Don't you agree? Well, sure, sure. Right. It, it, you, you know what you have when you've grown that product from, uh, from a seed yeah. 
to yeah. a fruit, to, yeah. a, to a vegetable. Yeah. So what is your experience on growing um, gardens? Have you? What is your experience? Uh, I was always the laborer. I was the... Uh, ah. Hard worker. The, the mule. The for, mule. For many gardens. <laughs> yeah. So I've been gardening all my life, ever since I can remember. When I, one time I said I'd never have a garden because we, we had to raise what we ate. And, uh, but there's something about it. When, it. when you are a true homesteader or you're a true gardener, it's into your blood and you cannot get away from it. Somehow, way or another, you got your hands into the dirt. So t today, guys, we're getting our hands into the dirt. So let's get started. What do you think? Sounds good. Sounds good. The first thing I'm going to do is create a border. I can do this with paint, with string, or uh, I'm not doing either one of those today. I'm just going to use the disc. I'm going to draw a straight line from end to end to end. Hey guys, we're at the end of the day and you've seen him doing his job here and I want him to explain to you what he was doing. Yeah, so my name is Bryce Rogers. I, I work with uh, Intelligent Design. Uh, we just picked up a tractor and uh, not very much equipment. We were trying to get a job like this done with really uh, cheap equipment or at least cost effective. Uh, the soil was super hard and it just wasn't getting it done. So we had to pick up a tiller. And a tiller on the back of a tractor like this took care of this in, in a little over an hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we tried to hit it up again today, but we had a, a, a lot of rain over the past few days. We did, about 100%. <laughs> and, it was 100%. And uh, you know, we're going to get stuck. So we can't even steer. So our lines are going all crazy and stuff, and we can't even steer because it's so muddy. Um, but a, a tiller took care of even the roots. It, it acted almost like a, a stump grinder. It had no, no problem with the roots, and I was, I was really pleased with that a frontier tiller. Um, so the, the old disc harrow will work on soft soil, uh, not the hard, compact soil. So what areas do you actually work out of? How far do you go out? You know, what is your expansion of your work? Predominantly, I work out of Jacksonville. Jacksonville is my home base, uh, so I'll hit up the, the surrounding areas of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Uh, I got a couple customers in Wilmington that have been really good customers, so I come down to Wilmington frequently, and uh, and I try to work in multiple jobs when I end up driving this far. It's an hour and a half drive, so yeah. uh, an hour and a half to come out and, and till a garden probably wouldn't be profitable for either one of us. Yeah. But I'm already in the area. So right. And I, I'm in Castle Hay, North Carolina, on to the east coast of North Carolina. So, um, but yeah, so he, you know, you got to work it, you know. Hey guys, this is the end result and I'm so pleased. His telephone number will be down in the description. So what is your telephone number? Yeah, my telephone number is 765-242-6833. And I just started a Facebook business page, Intelligent Design. I don't know how you find that other than Facebook search. Yeah, they can find it. They're good. Probably smart. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and hit that like button and hit that bell so you'll know when the next video is rolling up. And I appreciate you so much for watching. Thank you so much all my subscribers and I'm so happy with this situation. Now this is my second garden. I've been working on 
Uh, my other garden, getting it amended, getting it ready to plant possibly potatoes and peas. And this one will be this first year, so we're going to test the pH into it, see how it's going to roll this year. I think it's going to do awesome, but your first year, you just got to get the planting, just put it out there and see what it does. And then the second year, you'll know exactly what you're up against. And I think it's going to turn out well because this soil here looks pretty good. I just got to find out what I'm lacking and what I need into it and just put the seed in the ground. So I advise you, get the growing. Thank you so much mm. for coming. Thank you so much. I'm so happy, y'all. I got, I got a garden. I got it going. It's going on. It's going on at the homestead. Love y'all guys. See you on the next video. Bye. Hey everybody, I am so excited for this day. We are breaking ground here onto the homestead and I want to meet. Hey everybody, I am so excited for this, for this. Hey guys, I am so excited for this day. We are breaking ground here onto the homestead and I want you to meet somebody and I want you to give him a shout out in your area. Okay, just bear with me. Just introduce me. Okay. See hey everyone, I am so excited about this day. We are getting... What happened? Did you see that? I don't know what it's a long day.